on the uh, community page. Uh, Louis Burkhoff, 1873-1957, theologian of the Christian Reformed Church. He was born in Ehrman, the Netherlands, and moved to Grand Rapids, Michigan in 1882. And after earning diplomas at Calvin College, 1897, and Calvin Theological Seminary, 1900, he was ordained in the Christian Reformed Church a two-year pastorate at Aldale, Michigan, was followed by two years of study at Princeton Theological Seminary uh, in 1904. He then returned to Grand Rapids to serve at Oakland Park Christian Reformed Church for two years. So, <clears throat> Burkhoff had a very impeccable Calvinistic background um, at Calvin Seminary um, and uh, Princeton Theological Seminary, very stronghold Calvinistic places. In 1906, Burkhoff began a 38-year teaching career at Calvin uh, Theological Seminary, serving also as the first president of the seminary from 1931 until the retirement in 1944. Uh, the first 20 years were devoted to the biblical areas of first both Old and New Testament subjects, but after 1914, New Testament studies only. In 1926, Burkhoff became professor of dogmatics or systematic theology, and continued in that field for the next 18 years, he is best known as a systematic theologian. English, English became the language of instruction at Calvin Seminary in 1924, and Burkhoff's publication was aimed at the need to be students. <coughs> 1932, his class lectures were published in two volumes of Reformed Dogmatics. A revised and expanded edition appeared in 1938, and a single volume in 784 pages entitled Systematic Theology. This is the volume for which he is best known. In addition to the standard work covered, the six main branches, loci of systematic theology, Burkhoff added an introduction volume to systematic theology in 1932, uh, which was on foundation issues, which was also subsequently revised and enlarged. And he also added a volume in history of Christian doctrine, 1937, which traced the development of Christian doctrine from the Apostolic Fathers to the Liberalism of Schleiermacher and Richer. In his work on systematic theology, Burkhoff followed in the line of John Calvin and embraced the development of Reformed theology by the Dutch theologians Abraham Kuyper and Hermann Bavink. The specific influence of the later four-volume Reformed dogmatics, dogmatics is most evident. Burkhoff was not an original or speculative theologian. He followed world-tried paths. His major significance lay in setting forth the riches of the Reformed heritage in contrast to the major theologies of history. His writing was solid and well organised for classroom use as well as for private study. His systematic theology has been widely used in theological seminaries and Bible institutes throughout the United States and Bible institutes throughout the United States and Canada as well as uh, conservative circles throughout the world. A Spanish translation appeared in 1969. In 1921, uh, uh, Burkhoff delivered the Stone Lectures at Princeton Theological Seminary. They were published under the title Kingdom of God, 1951. He took an active part in the life of the church and published extensively in the denominational papers. The following monograph deserves a special mention. Assurance of Faith, 1928. Vicarious Atonement through Christ, 1936. Principles of Biblical Interpretation, 1950, Aspects of Liberalism, 1951, Second Coming of Christ, 1953, and The Riches of Divine Grace, 1948, the later a collection of ten sermons, F. H. Clouster is the writer there. So let me share my thoughts here. Um, what is interesting, um, that biography there, uh, Mr. Uh, some major elements in Burkhoff's life. Uh, he was involved in a defence against evolution in his denomination. Um, he really battled against that. He also battled against higher criticism. There was a big controversy in his denomination and he stood against higher criticism. And also he had a big uh, bash up debate uh, and a real controversy with Hosekeme who uh, wrote a volume of Reformed Dogmatics and Hosekeme was saying that uh, the grace of God, that there was no um, what can it, common grace to the unbeliever, uh, whereas Burkhoff was saying there was common grace 
uh, which is like a, uh, not an electing love, but a love for believers uh, in creation. And there was a big debate there. So there was three major, major big debates in Burkhoff's life. Uh, just some thoughts about Burkhoff. Um, he really uh, follows uh, Abraham Kuyper's method of apologetics to the, t to the T. So when you read his systematic theology, right at the beginning, he has no interest in doing any apologetics because he believes that the presuppositions of your opponent dictate the evidence which means that Kuiper was saying that you can't beat the unbeliever on basic um, argumentation and evidence because the unbeliever will interpret the evidence in a different way than you. His presuppositions will interpret it. So what Abraham Kuiper said is let's look at our opponent's worldview as opposed to our worldview. So let's take the totality of the doctrine of atheism or teaching of atheism, the totality of, say, Islam, and let's compare it to the totality of Christianity. So, Burkhoff does not enter into any real defense of the Bible or defense of anything. God bless you, uh, brother. God bless you, Ryan. So, uh, he, so Burkhoff really follows to the T, to the line, to the letter, Abraham Kuyper. And I think... Uh, it lacks a little bit of apologetic there, right at the beginning, in his systematic theology. Um, but he wrote uh, a, a history of theology. He wrote uh, a book on the New Testament. Uh, and these books are very, very helpful. His systematic theology, it's not an easy read. Uh, but it's like a condensed uh, Herman Bavink's Reformed Dogmatics. Why have I done this video? I've done this video because he he sums up a man who really loved the Word of God, he really loved the truth, and he defended it. He defended against evolution, he defended against high criticism. Yeah, I think people do find it disappointing, uh, freedom, because it, it's quite it's not easy reading, it's quite dense. Not like... Um, not like, uh, what's it called, uh, Wayne Grudem, where it's a lot easier to read. It, it's quite uh, dense and it's, it, it's quite rigid in its style. But there's a, if you want to like do an academic study, his systematic theology is very helpful if you want to do an academic study. If you want more of a devotional study of theology, like Grudem's systematic theology is better. But I've done this video because he's a man that really stood for the Word of God. And in a time today when the Bible is being attacked on every front, where heresy is around in every way, we need to go back to people that, that inspire us to study the Word of God. And, and he wrote some really good books, his introduction to New Testament, um, and his book on... Um, uh, Well, I wouldn't recommend Antony C. Thielston's book. I would not recommend that at all. I don't think that's... 